Welcome back to week five. In this week's video, we will be covering opposing arguments. This week's lesson builds on topics covered in other video lessons, and we've covered a lot in the last four weeks. This video will ask you to recall some of those topics, and if you do not remember those topics, it will provide an opportunity to go back and rewatch some of the videos in previous weeks and review those topics covered. Remember back to the week three video lesson when you were asked to debate three topics, Arsenal, Google, and a topic of your choice. If you do not remember, now would be an excellent time to pause this video and go back and rewatch the week two video. For the do now activity, choose one topic. Make two columns on your piece of paper. Brainstorm at least three ideas for both sides of your topic. Great job brainstorming. I'm sure that you came up with excellent points. Now that we're warmed up, let's launch into the lesson. When trying to persuade people in writing, we talked about the importance of supporting our own ideas with evidence. Another important step in writing persuasively is including the other side. The other side, yes, the other side. Strong writers are able to include the other side and refute the other side with evidence. What if I can't defend the other side? If you can't defend the other side, then you might need to switch sides in the argument. The strongest argument is the argument with the strongest evidence. And the strongest writers are able to defend their own ideas with evidence and include the other side in their paper. Including a section on the other side can strengthen your writing. In this video lesson, we will cover how to include the other side in writing. Step one is to acknowledge that there are many sides to any argument. A willingness to include other sides in your argument demonstrates confidence through writing. To include the other side in writing, you need to think about what someone might say in opposition to your argument. To do this, you might ask yourself, what would someone who disagreed with me say? There are certain phrases that can help you integrate other sides into your own paper. Other phrases such as, a popular concern is, or it is true that, or some argue, or better yet, a specific author's name argues that. Once you've selected the claim that you want to defend against and smoothly integrated that claim into your own writing, the next step is to support that claim with evidence. It is important to support the claim with strong evidence just as you would support your own ideas with strong evidence. An ability to defend against an opinion strongly supported by evidence demonstrates a strong ability to write persuasively. If you selected the claim that you want to defend against, smoothly integrated that claim into your own writing by using transitional phrases and defended that idea with evidence, you've successfully integrated the other side into your own writing. You're ready for the final step. The final step is to refute the claim. To refute the claim, restate your opinion and support your opinion with evidence. Once again, it's very important to use transitional phrases. If, however, you cannot refute the claim, that means that you should switch sides. That means that your other side becomes your final conclusion and your opinion becomes the other side. This can be somewhat confusing, but it is an important part of writing. Sometimes we end up changing our minds. Once again, it is very important to use transitional phrases to smoothly integrate our ideas in our paper. Some helpful phrases include, nevertheless, however, but. You might say something like, although it is true that this claim is the strongest because, or something to that effect. Now that we've covered how to include the other side to strengthen our writing, let's take a look at an example. 
Let's say my argument is that sports are undoubtedly beneficial for students because they reduce stress, keep the body active, and foster friendships. What do we think of this argument? Is this a strong argument? This argument looks pretty good. We have a claim. The claim is that sports are undoubtedly beneficial for students. And we have reasoning. The reason that sports are undoubtedly beneficial for students is that they reduce stress, keep the body active, and foster friendships. This looks like a pretty strong argument. Now let's look at the objection. The objection is that a major counter-argument might be that sports are a distraction to the academic sides of school and cause students to lose focus. What do we make of this objection? One of the things is that, that I notice about this is that there is a transition to the objection and the transi transition is that a major counter argument might be that and then we have a claim supported by reasoning and the claim is that sports are just a distraction to the academic sides of school and cause students to lose focus. So this is a pretty strong objection. It directly speaks to our argument. Let's look at the rejoinder. The rejoinder is that while it is certainly true that some students become tunnel visioned in their pursuit of sports, play and forsake their learning, sports have been proven to serve as a healthy break for students during high stress times and in many cases are even used to keep children in school and away from gang violence. What do we think of this rejoinder? This looks like a pretty strong rejoinder. We have a transitional phrase. It says that while it is certainly true that some students become tunnel visioned in their pursuit of sports, play and forsake their learning, sports have been proven to serve as a healthy break for students during high stress times. And we clearly have a claim and that claim is supported by evidence. This is a pretty strong argument. Now that we've looked at an example of an argument with an objection and a rejoinder, it's your turn to practice. I would like you to choose one of the topics from the Do Now activity, either Arsenal or Google or your choice, and write a paragraph that includes an argument and an objection and a rejoinder. Great job completing this week's video lesson. In this week's video lesson, we covered how to incorporate the other side in our own writing. This skill will be an important skill for the upcoming competency exams. For this week's homework, please log on to the Google Classroom and complete the assignment for this week. If you have any questions about this topic or the homework or would like more resources, please ask one of your teachers. We've provided one link to further reading in the description below. Great job. See you next week.